All right, so let's talk about nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is the combining of atomic nuclei. We're going to fuse nucleus, nu two nuclei together. Well, why would we go about doing that? Um, let's look at this graph here. This graph, on the, on the x-axis, we're going to have mass number. On the y-axis, we're talking about binding energy. And binding energy is energy needed to break one mole of nuclei into its nucleons. Um, so it's how much energy it takes to break apart a nucleus. So here, this band on the middle that I'd written is at mass number about 60. And notice it has the highest binding energy. It's going to take a lot of energy to break apart that nucleus. Things that have a higher, um, higher at atomic sorry, mass number than 60 are going to undergo the, what we call fission. Fission is when, we, um, is when we break apart the nuclei and get towards a mass number closer to 60. Um, over here in the low mass numbers, we're going to go through fusion. We're going to push those nuclei together to get, the mass, to get it to a very stable nucleus of 60. So let's talk about nuclear fusion a bit more. All right, so here we have two low, uh, we have four, sorry, low um, atomic number, the smallest atom of hydrogen. We're going to fuse those guys together, and we're going to release some beta particles or electrons and two helium nuclei. And notice a lot, a lot of energy is going to be released. This guy is a little bit more stable, as you can see, than this guy. Okay, so how does this go about happening? We have to actually bombard these hydrogen par particles together at very, very high speeds in order for them to fuse together. Because don't forget, when these guys get close to each other, when these nucleus get close to each other, they're two positive things. They're going to repel. So we have to have tons of energy to overcome that repulsion to get them close enough together where they're going to bind and fuse. And when they actually do, tons of energy is going to be released, and that energy can be used to, to it can be harnessed to, to, to energize anything, to do anything we want it to. So um, why don't we use this, if a lot of energy is being produced, why don't we use this in, um, instead of nuclear fission? Because nuclear fission is what's actually used in um, nuclear power plants, and they actually give off byproducts that are pretty harmful. So here are some pros. Let's go over the pros of talking about nuclear fission, or sorry, fusion. Um, well, the things that we need to, to do nuclear fission, um, sorry, fusion, is um, we have high abundance of them. So we have these small particles on the planet, hydrogen, helium, things like that that are very small, that we have a lot of. We, on this Earth, we have a lot of these smaller particles. We don't have as many bigger particles that are used for nuclear fission. So, and so we have a, that's a really good thing that we have a lot of, of them. We also get no radioactive byproducts, meaning nothing from this reaction is harmful to the environment. Um, helium atoms are not harmful to the environment. Beta particles are totally fine. So we have no radioactive by byproducts as we do when we talk about nuclear fission. We also get significantly more energy when, these, when this reaction occurs. A lot more energy, thousands of times more energy with, with fusion than we do with fission. So again, why don't we ever use this? Well, here's why. It's really, like I said before, it takes a lot of energy to overcome that, in, that um, repulsion force that those two nuclei have together. So it's going to take a lot of energy to sustain and initiate this particular reaction. Think about it. There, this reaction, fusion, actually happens in the sun. The sun is extremely hot. It takes a lot of energy for that, to, for, um, for that reaction to happen. Um, it's only achieved at high temperatures, 40 million Kelvin. That's insanely hot. It's actually impossible to find a, a, a container that can harness that, that sort of um, not in harness, but that can contain that sort of high temperature. Um, this actually attained an atomic explosions. We need atomic explosions to actually initiate this temperature, or this, uh, yeah, the temperature and this actual energy needed to actually have the reaction move forward. So can you think of it as a container that can contain that? Um, so neither can we. So this actually, this reaction is not used to initiate energy, which is why you might think about um, things are being tossed around in the chemistry community, such as like cold fusion, or um, other ways we can use this, or we can actually have this type of reaction to get this type of energy to come to uh, to have like hydrogen fuel cells, things like that. So for now, we're going to stick with with nuclear fission, but hopefully in the future, nuclear fusion will be the way to go.